Hello and welcome to Hint of Film. My name is Nelson. I'll be your host today. We had a bit of technical difficulty on our first pass, but we're going to give it another go. Um, today we have a very special guest, the director of Epicentro, Hubert Sauper. Uh, please welcome Hubert. Hi, Hubert. Hi, Nelson. Hi, Nelson. So, nice to see you. Uh, nice to see you too. So tell me yeah. again, just so everyone knows, where where are you tuning in from in this evening time? I'm in a in a in a very old car on a completely humanless train station in France. It feels uh, it feels very strange, very dystopian <laughs> here. Um, yeah, but I'm inside inside of a car. It's still summer, um, and I have a connection with my phone to the internet. So I'm, excellent. I'm happy, to, I'm happy to talk to you. Yeah, well, That's I'm glad. Point. Yeah, glad to have a steady yeah. connection. And um, yeah, thank yeah. you again for. Um, for joining me. Um, I became acquainted with your work when I saw your previous film, We Come As Friends. I, I saw it at Sundance, and then I saw it again in LA in theaters because I was very mesmerized. And um, I want to start by just take me from the end of that film into the new film, Epicentro. How did, what's the transition and how did you find yourself going from South Sudan to Cuba? Um. Well, the thing is, you know, I'm I'm a I'm a very privileged wandering filmmaker, and I get public funding to work uh, over many years. Um, so, um, uh, you know, I've, I've been in many places. It sounds very exotic sometimes. It's uh, I shot in Tanzania and Congo and in Sudan uh, and, and other places, and ultimately, I always make films about us it's about us europeans or uh, my films are essentially about what what the fuck am i doing here <laughs> what are we doing here mm -hmm. so uh so i don't go to, to the congo to make a film about the congo it's like essentially about the dialectic about europeans being in the congo yes that has a long a long history and very painful history and and cuba is one of these places uh, where Europeans landed. Uh, besides, you know, Columbus landed just off the shores of of Cuba, and uh, and you know, you know, you know the story. Five hundred years of, of murder, destruction, genocide, destruction of nature, disintegration of of cultures, uh, annihilation of of uh, religions and belief structures languages that's it you know that's the story of dominance colonization imperialism and uh havana is havana is, a, is the epicenter the name of my film is called epicentro mm -hmm. it was the epicenter of the spanish colonial empire it, it was uh, in a way the epicenter of the cold war even uh yeah. it was the epicenter of uh it became the epicenter of the american empire and that's the story where epicenter my epicentro my film start was the big bang of the U.S.'s main, and the U.S.'s main uh, was the uh, causus bellis to the Spanish-American War, which was the first interventionist war uh, in modern history, 120 years ago, and all the following wars, uh, uh, Vietnam, Iraq, uh, Afghanistan, and, and, and so on, um, were blueprints of the same, of the same kind of technique. Uh, mm -hmm. The blueprints of the Spanish American War. And what is what was specific about the Spanish American War was not that there was a causus bellis and one empire was kind of kicking out the other empire of a place to take over um, um, in this case Cuba and the Philippines with the pretext to liberate Cuba, the famous line Cuba Libre. Mm -hmm. But what was very specific was that the the problem of, of uh, American war, war hawks was not how to beat Spain militarily, but how to convince Americans that the Spanish are rats and devils, and they need to be they need to be kicked out, and we need to liberate Cuba. So, mm -hmm. and the technology to uh, shift American public opinion was a new technology. Was it's called, it's kind of a witchcraft. It's kind of a mass hypnotizing technology. It's called cinema, and, uh, and that's where it started. <laughs> yeah, that, I mean, was, uh, yes, yeah. That brings up an excellent question, and and that's one of the things that's so fascinating about this film, as a, as a, 
movie lovers and cinema lovers, it's a it's sort of a damning portrayal in a lot of ways of what it can do and how it can be manipulative. And you know, anyone who's worked on films knows how, especially nonfiction films that even are supposed to be true have the ability to manipulate the truth and all that. And so exploring this and sort of exposing this, how do you how do you reckon with that reality? And also that that you yourself, this is your medium of choice as well, and that you too are using these tools? Well, um, I, I, I don't think that I'm exposing anything really. It's, it's, not, it's not new that cinema was used from the beginning as, as propaganda. Yeah, that's true. What I, what I do as a filmmaker is, is, is tell a story that is kind of known, technically known in a new way so you can experience it. Uh, and knowledge is not the same as experience, you know, and, uh, and that is the big, big power and also the danger of cinema, of course. That's why uh, from the beginning of the Spanish-American War to, the, uh, to, to Stalin, to, Nazi, to, to the Nazis, everyone, every leader, every dictator in Africa, everyone who wanted power or had power used this means mm -hmm. of moving images to, to, um, to affirm power and to start wars and uh, to you know push people to to commit genocide or so that's not new but what is new is 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 that the, the story of epicenter is essentially uh, that the american empire was born in a, in a bathtub in new york mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> that yeah very that's but, new uh, i mean and that <laughs> let's that perfectly you, segues you, 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 <laughs> Yeah. No, I didn't. I had no. I didn't know that history. It, it sort of, in hindsight, adds yeah, up. I, mean, I can. I can explain it because you people have not seen the film yet. But so, yeah. the, the American but, Empire was born in, in a bathtub, and Hollywood was also born in a bathtub with a certainly. special effect of uh, of little warships that supposedly depicted the Spanish American War. Uh, so little ships, little models with uh, smoke of cigars and firecrackers. And those films were taken for for real, and and they were, you know, bringing and uh, calling thousands of young Americans to to go to the navy and and to go mm -hmm. to war against Spain. You know. Yeah, and that that segues perfectly into one of my most important questions, and one of the things that I love so much about your work, and that's your use of visual motifs. And for my money, there are few nonfiction filmmakers who use visual symbolism the way you do and you introduce these seemingly ordinary objects and things like smoke or, or cannons or or silent movies or roosevelt and you seemingly just introduce them and then suddenly they all connect and they're all part of this larger narrative in a, in a really compelling way so how is this constructed walk me through the process of these symbols these symbols that you put together well well, I, I I don't really think of a, about symbols, you know, or symbolism. I I, I just try to uh, convey a story, if possible, with with images and and connect uh, like um, a cocktail of images that hit each other, mm -hmm. uh, rather than words or explanations. You know, that's that is the force of of, of cinema, um, and. Uh, because cinema is, is is so powerful, the reason why it's so powerful is that it's that it's an experience that you experience something, and in in, in the case of Epicentro, I I try to experience it even in a in a more powerful way through the eyes of of ten year old, very politicized and very very smart and beautiful young humans in Havana mm -hmm. that I call the the young prophets, um, um and. So we are not only experiencing ourselves. Let's say we we watch an execution which was uh, filmed in 1898. We see uh, a death squad shooting ten people, um, and we believe it's an archive. And then we slowly learn that it's uh, that it is all staged and it's shot in not in Cuba but in 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 uh, Florida, mm -hmm. and that we and we can see naval battles and we understand later. That is shot in a bathtub. So, but we experience it also with the characters of my film. 
who watch the footage yes. and so we are so we are together so the togetherness is the actual power of cinema it's not that you see something it's but you see something in a crowd of people within a, within a crowd of people and you so if you're sitting in a cinema room seeing children experiencing something and you experience it with the neighbor next to you if it's not covid 19 people sit next to each other mm -hmm. in cinemas uh, the strange thing is that epicenter is, is about cinema uh, in the beginning of it and we seem to witness the end of it now as 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 we watch this film <laughs> that is I a very special i hope yeah. not but anyway so so i i i'm not i'm not like designing a film thinking about symbolism i'm just designing a film thinking about how can i passionately uh convey a story without having talking heads or without having specialists Mm -hmm. uh talking uh, or without being like uh, a, like a tutor or, or a teacher i want i uh, want just i want you to to go on a journey and to to experience an amazing movie you go to the movies you know and then mm -hmm. you learn something and you feel smarter and you feel connected to the people who who you met quote unquote yeah and maybe and, that's uh, what's so Maybe that's what's so radical is that so much of nonfiction cinema is, is built on those those kind of stable interviews and narration and all that. And, and yet yeah. with your with your work, it's it is much more immersive. It's just kind of it's just like moments of being present rather than yeah. um, taking out of that. Well, well, I guess you you're a filmmaker yourself. I mean, the question one has to ask, we have to ask ourselves, what is cinema? And if 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 somebody feels films just talking heads, is it cinema? You know, mm -hmm. it can. I think it can be, if the talking head is 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 not only talking to your your intellect, but your to your mind and to and, and, and talking to you as a person. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. The fog of war is, is also a talking head, sure. so to say. Yeah. But that is really cinema. You know. Yeah, but, uh, that... in many cases, in many cases it's not. And so, so what you call in French reportage, or, or uh, I don't know how you say in America in English. Uh, what is a reportage, mm -hmm. which is a TV, a uh, TV documentary or something? That, that that is not cinema, you know. And a lot of uh, films that pretend to be cinema are not, of course. Uh, yeah, I think that's often the you know yeah television versus w yeah what is cinema kind of a an yeah. ongoing debate. Yeah, I want to ask you about one specific symbol and i know you said symbols are not uh you know perhaps it's i'm the one applying that the, i see these as symbols but uh in both we come as friends and an epicentro you use this visual of an upside down earth toward the beginning of the film and i want to ask you in, in epicentro it has to do with the lights and and where our eyes go with the lights but i want to ask you what and i because i saw this in both films i want to ask tell me what what did you make of the upside down earth? Uh, that's so interesting because uh, I sometimes see uh, pieces of one of my old films and I, I realized that in every film of mine, there is some woman uh, singing uh, in every film of mine, as you just said, which I never really thought about. Really? <laughs> oh, wow. It's, it's, I, I just, I just, you, you know, uh, it's, it's, you, you can say one makes you make always the same movie, you know, in different versions, maybe. But uh, I, I, I have no answer to that. It's, it's <laughs> all right, fair enough. I, yeah, um, no. it, uh, I, I figured. Uh, let's let's see. I mean, the the Earth from space is a very known image, mm -hmm. um, and you can type on on youtube you have high, high resolution earth from space and you have to do all these amazing shots traveling and i thought it was it was boring so i i figured i want to film it again uh, so i took my computer screen and my camera and i just filmed with the handheld camera the traveling shot over the earth and it makes it like less sharp and more improvised and more like uh, in my sense stronger because it's mm -hmm. like somebody holding a camera is like flying through space and then i i did the version by just turning the computer around you know uh, yeah. and then i was i was upside down and uh and that's the version that made it into the film um why exactly i, I just thought it 
I wanted to give it a different um, different look, and it makes you dizzier, and it's it's in a way, uh, uh, you know, that's how, how you don't usually see the world. Is you see it upside up. <laughs> yeah, it's foreign. It makes it foreign. Yeah. It makes it an yeah. otherworldly and, place. That and then and this and this whole idea of of uh, hypnosis, so to say, that cinema you kind of. Uh, applies on your on, on one's brain uh that makes it stronger i guess that's why i also like to shoot at night uh, I, I, because it's more uh, you know less destruction i'm now in the middle of the night so you can, can see my face without like uh, traffic from paris behind me or without yeah. stupid stuff behind me so it's so it's more concentrated mm -hmm. um um you're sitting in a white with a white background so yes yeah so, no, and, and suddenly when i when i look at myself i have to think about what's behind me and how do i frame it in such a way but you with you it's yeah. it's very much your face that's a you that's can a put a big screen big screen behind you and, and a space travel or something like <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah well that that that's a good segue to i want to talk about your your filming experience and what what it's like because you are a filmmaker who who shoots, who writes, who directs, who edits. But let's talk first about being, how do you, how do you plan a trip to Cuba to shoot and how long are you there? And how do you, how do you set it up? Because the end result, it just feels so natural and seamless. Like you might, it seems like you have so much material you're working from because it's also excellently put together. Um, well, I, I have, I have a like intellectually a quite, precise idea about my films before starting and I write scripts to find money uh, which are kind of you can be read like a little story I, I invent so quote unquote uh, archetypes of figures that I might meet when I start shooting the film so you know you can describe you know politicians you can des describe uh, uh, young women in the streets of Havana, because uh, you can describe children more or less how they how they are and how they think. Because I've been, of course, before in Havana. Mm -hmm. um, so I write a story of what may happen, and by writing the story, I, I like anyone who writes. Uh, you don't write something that you know, but you uh, you you kind of things come to you. Um, I don't know how to say it. it's it's a learning process to write. It's not something that you know that you just put on paper. Mm -hmm. As you write, you understand, you learn stuff, and and then and then I go. Uh, let's say I move to I move to Havana. You know, I'm not just like flying from Paris to Havana, shoot, and then fly back to my safe place in 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 Paris. I. Mm -hmm. I moved to Havana. I, I, I found a place uh, on the rooftop which was completely abandoned. Um, and I asked the person who owns it, uh, because you can't buy property in, in, as a foreigner, of course, can I, can I use this space for, for a while and, and uh, for, for a bit of money, of course. And I, I essentially built my little house on, on the rooftop with uh, old wood. And really? it's the rooftop that you can see in the film, by the way, with yes. the hammer. And the, that's my little house, which I built with my own hands. You know, uh, but it's not that I don't have the means to have it made or to rent a little room in Havana. It's that I needed to to have a place which is my place. Yes, which is my which is my epicenter where I can sit and and drink my coffee and know this is this is where I kind of created my space and and mm -hmm. uh, I put up like a uh, big board with uh i put up my editing suite i always shoot and edit kind of synchronized oh, really? so i okay. shoot i shoot something and and if i'm happy with what i just did i spend the following night just trying to trying to make a rough you know cut from it and for this but, film yeah. how long how so how long if i may ask about how long were you in havana total when you were done uh, like uh, three years uh, three years with, with interrupting uh, the summers i went back to france a little bit but um three years in in on my little place in havana yes wow. in old havana and it wasn't very it wasn't very comfortable of course i had 
the money to go out and and buy a cafe latte on on some of these places which, which are made for tourists but yeah but i i lived very much a cuban life there uh, as a matter of fact you know mm -hmm. and I, how much I my, my kitchen outdoors and so, so I, I had to be there i had to live in this space in order to describe it and then i started to have great friends i went i, I did i gave courses at the film school in in san antonio the national wow. the international film school so mm -hmm. i had a kind of raison d'etre i had a you know green card for like from the government and i was known in the neighborhood because you know when you when you come with with as a foreigner in in a, in a neighborhood of Otavana, of course the first thing is you have to everyone talking about what you're doing and of course everyone thinks that you work for the cia or or, or some yeah some some strange uh, some some strange information service and uh and but once you get uh familiar and once people can kind of understand what you're doing and you're in a very good place and very protected also and i was also protected by by my neighbors who knew i was working on the film by the parents of the kids i was working with you know they were very supportive they understood what i was doing and and they gave me full trust which was very important um so yeah and that helps explain a lot of what makes the film work so well because there's a there's a pretty incredible moment and it's a bit scathing from my opinion of, of a foreign photographer trying to take pictures of kids and and sort of you can tell he, he's very much an outsider coming in and snapping pictures and and sort of what's often called like poverty tourism in the US and and um, yeah, we'll pull and you know I was thinking in my head I was like well you know Hubert is also a, a foreigner and yet the results are are so different you don't you don't need to be explained what the difference is but I think perhaps that sense of time that you're there for three years, you, you're able to build a rapport and an intimate rapport with not just the, the people, but the place itself. And um, that's not to say you aren't a foreigner, but you, you don't have that sort of invasive component that if you're only there for a week, well, you might well, I mean, that is the big question. I mean, the, uh, that is the question I was asking myself and I was playing with in the film too. It's like, there were situations, of course, when I was, very much uh, inside of the world I'm describing. Sometimes I was not, you know? Mm -hmm. And there was one, there was at least one situation which is in the film, which was very critical and very uh, questionable also. And I was literally saying, what the fuck am I doing? You know, it's like, what am I, I was following a tourist, like pouring into these uh, privacy, uh, into the privacy of people. And I was behind this person filming him violating space essentially yeah in order to describe it i was a part of the violation and that's in that very moment you know uh, there's no doubt and in the, in the eyes of these people at this very moment i was i was just another white guy with another camera you know there's no there's no question but of course the difference is that that like uh the day the day after i, I went to see these people i showed them some footage i explained the whole context and they were laughing loud we had a glass of rum and and became friends and so wow. that is different but it's also because my because i have you know funding to to stay there for three years and that is the difference but but the question is in the film and then and it's, it's like you cannot be a white man in africa for example by saying i'm like everyone else i'm not mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just a white man in africa and i carry if i want or not like hundreds of of years of very painful history even if you know you you or i would go to, to a village in kenya and, and connect as much as we can uh with with these beautiful humans and um, mm -hmm. which is also very legitimate you know you're also just a human being seeing another human being but you you carry also without if you if you, if you want or not you carry a lot of history well, you have a very sense of self-awareness and whereas, and when we're, you're watching the film, it feels like a, a person is there taking the picture. It's not, whereas I think so many photographers try to pretend, say, you know, pretend like I'm not here, you know, and, and don't have that, yeah. but, um, but that's not the case. No, no I mean, the, 
there are good films with the so-called fly on the wall, um, you know, philosophy. But I, I am the opposite. I'm, I'm maybe a fly on the wall, but it's <laughs> like everybody. Yeah. <laughs> so, but uh, what I, what I like most in these kind of, uh, in these kind of situations is when you feel that the rudder is being taken by the people who are being filmed. It's like when the kids go, "Give me your phone." Let me try. Let me show you something. It's not. That's not. I. I'm not saying like, can you make a little film so I can film you making a little film? It's the opposite, you know. Mm -hmm. So, so these are the golden moments, and and they are very very often coming back. So there comes a point when you are really linked, and when you're really in a in a in a, in a flow with the people you are you're filming, that you don't need to like say like now let's do this or let's do this it's the opposite it's like people say like let me show you something let me show you my my hood let me tell let me tell you a story it's not that filmmakers say like can you please tell me a story of your it's like the person who's being filmed wants to be seen wants to be acknowledged wants to be uh, put in value a kid that is 10 years old who cares about a kid who's 10 years old in the port of uh, old havana unless you look into this kid's eyes and say, I'm here. Mm -hmm. I look at you. What is your name? I'm listening to you. I'm here. I listen to you. Yeah. And then and then magic happens. Yeah. And then this kid talks about you know geopolitics, slavery, uh, humiliation, Trump is is, is what it I mean, I don't need to say what yeah, Trump is. No, yeah. So it's, it's just like so amazing. It's so amazing. And I'm just running and the camera is is Reg is kind of reading, in a way, my fascination of this moment too, and, and the end of, result, just, uh, just recording fascination. Yes, and the end result is a. In the end, you you have I imagine you have so much material that the final film, the hour and forty minutes, is is the very very best. You're and with that time, you're able to really pull and say what are like you've earned those those moments because you've spent so much time with these these characters and these individuals and, and yeah i mean even you and i we're talking now for 33 minutes you you're not exploiting my words you're giving me attention and i and i give you what i can give mm -hmm. so it's an exchange you're not just taking my picture we we are talking and we're exchanging mm -hmm. uh, and that's a big Big difference and that's that comes back to the first question you were asking is uh of course cinema is is a extraction extractionist is that a word in english uh, uh a colonial act when you go to a like let's say with with a big gear uh, to the south and, and take pictures mm -hmm. and go back to new york but it can also be the opposite it can be also just a, a little camera can be the actual link and not the and not the division between yeah humans you know it so, opens it up i mean when i saw yeah. we come as friends my interest was because i i wanted to see south sudan no one takes pictures of south sudan in the west you know and and that's yeah. it, it was and cuba kind of similar i think we like you talk about in the film we think of cuba we think of cigars and we think of cars and and that's that's it and yet there are people there and it's it's a it's a place that well, has pace. Old, old gringos think of Cigars, old cars, and young women. I guess. Uh, yes. Makes sure. Better, which, which 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 creates a cocktail in their brains that makes them like go go a bit off of course. You know. Yeah. Uh, and it's a, it's of course it's an association like in in Havana is almost every everywhere you look is 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 in a very 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 strange way America great again. You know, it's like this is a. America, as it's envisioned by, yeah, uh, by by the glorious times, the fifties, uh, the mafia, the mafia, America, yeah. is what we are as tourists going to try to see and 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 love, you know. We're trying to, yeah, yeah it's, tourism is so much. It's, it's, so it's mafia America. It's Hollywood. It's like the better version of Hollywood. The imagery of, of Havana is like what what is Hollywood now? It's like it's. it's nothing very original anymore except the, 
the actual writing and the, the, the boards on in the mountain saying Hollywood. Mm -hmm. But the imagery of Hollywood, what's left is not much. A few billboards and a few palm trees in the sunset. Yeah. But Havana, but, but Havana is Havana is, is the perfect, much better version of it, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You see that all the time in places. I, I think about Las Vegas a lot, how Las Vegas once was exactly, it was something interesting and alluring and casino. And now you go to Las Vegas and it's, it's a parody of itself and yeah. it's, it's no longer, there's not a bone of authenticity in it. You know why? You know, the, the rise of Las Vegas was because of Fidel Castro, you know? Oh, I didn't because, even, I, I didn't because, even make that. Well, because, the, because Havana was going to be the actual Las Vegas. Havana was going to be the, the big hub with casinos all over. If it weren't for the, if if Castro and, and Che Guevara wouldn't have stopped the process, you know, and then and mm -hmm. then Las Vegas rose. Wow, That's, I didn't know that. I, I yeah. did not know that. Yeah. Let me ask you, going back to this idea of outsiders, you know, entering and filming and all that. Have you ever considered making a film? about your own home territory where you wouldn't be an outsider where a place where you know with the same style that you approach long term and what do you mean my home where I was where I was born either where you where where you were born or where you reside as an adult i mean instead of traveling to cuba well saying, i reside i reside in many so many places now i reside where i'm now it is a train station of a um, half an hour from here is my little farm in Burgundy. Uh, my home as a child was a small village in, in the Austrian mountains where essentially next to the place where the sound of music was, was shot. Oh, wow. Yeah. Which is overwhelmingly beautiful mountains, um, lakes, um, every house has little flowers. People sing to roll in songs. Um, and it's also populated, uh, you know, at least when I was a kid, by old Nazis, and um, and overflown already at the time by tourists from Italy and Germany mm -hmm. and America. So I might one one day work about that because I think one of the reason why I got so so crazy <laughs> uh, is because I grew up in these crazy friction lines where where sheer beauty and the abyss meet and where yeah. for example I, I grew up in quote unquote in america that's maybe the last thing i i, I talk about before it's getting really late yeah um, uh, my dad had, had a little hotel and a ski school and he made a friend um who was one of the main generals of the U.S. Air Force in Rhine Main in Frankfurt, which is the the European hub from the U.S. Air Force, the biggest air base wow. in Europe from the from the U.S. U.S. And when I was a kid it, in the early seventies, it was the peak of the Vietnam War. So, the Vietnam bomber pilots from the U.S. Air Force would like. I was going to say nuke. No, they were napalm bombed and Agent Orange carpet bombed Vietnam. Uh, they were completely freaked out, full of drugs, came back to Rhein Main in Rhein Main. They were not sent straight to, to America, but they were sent to the Austrian mountains to chill off with their nurses mm -hmm. and to recover. And, and they went to the little inn of my parents uh, wow. to recover, to recover from the war which was itself in inside of this beautiful sound of music setting so to say mm -hmm. and surrounded by still old nazis at the time so essentially they the remains or the ghost of the third reich uh yeah. was 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 still around the vietnam war was going on so i was so i grew up in the, a bit in the in the third reich and in the vietnam war quote unquote but yeah but 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 not <laughs> Not I would enough. I would watch the the living hell out of that film. I think there, you know, with your sense of you have such a great sense of history as it relates to now and and showing the past mm -hmm. as as a way to, to look at the present as well and and you know all intertwined and you know beauty versus bloodshed, which are often you know beautiful places often have very close. History. 
very yeah. close. I mean, it's it's an old story. You know, the light and the abyss are very close. And paradise mm -hmm. and hell are, are, are very close. But yeah. uh, paradise, paradise and hell are not necessarily places. It's, I think it's uh, maybe that's the um, the quintessence of epicenter. I think is mm -hmm. that it is describing utopia. In this case, the the, the you know the island of Cuba. It is describing paradise, so to say, or the projection what paradise could be or should be for some people. But it's never a place. Paradise is never a place. It's always kind of a a fraction in time, if it, that could be. Or yeah. Sure, but well, it's like that a, idea of utopia place, in yeah. your film. It's it's a it's a myth. It's it's something that we we construct. Not it's, it's a, like it's a, it could be a moment if it's, but it's not a, a garden. It's not a garden. <laughs> yeah. I guess. So before we wrap up, I want to just ask you, what's next? Where do you where do you see yourself going next? I know it could be a couple of years, but you know where where do we see? I, you know, I'm, I'm, I think about two or three, uh, you know, directions I might go. But the first thing I want to do is just to not think of a film for a couple of months. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go back to Cuba because uh, my my. The kids in in my film are my family in a way, uh, and the people I met there. It's, it's I just have so many friends, and I want to go see them and help them out a bit with this stupid COVID situation. They can't really they can't really buy food <laughs> anywhere, so they're really in, in bad bad shape now. Hmm. So I'm gonna go back a couple of months to to Havana, uh, and then. Write a new a new film, but I'm not, I'm not going to tell you now. That's fine. No, 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 no. Yeah. Sure. Well, uh, well. Yeah. That's yeah. I mean, that speaks to that. That speaks to your your commitment to a, a location is that you become part of it, like you said, and and you really yeah. it it shows in the film. It shows how much yeah. how much love and rapport is with everyone you shoot, especially. Um, I'm, the kids. Glad, I'm glad you see it. You know, because I mean, some people don't. You know. Um, yeah. Some people don't. Some people say like, yeah, the, the, the stories are disconnected. What, how do you? Why do you film waves in the middle of the night? And what does that have to do with colonialism? Oh, it has uh, so. But, but but that's for your symbols. You you. But, uh, I know you yeah. You know, there's all. a good saying. There's a good saying, a French saying, which uh, which is typically French and very arrogant. But it says when you when you point to when you point to the moon. To the idiot, the idiot looks at the finger. Yeah. Hmm. So, wow. yeah. There's some, here's the here's the street lights of a train station in France. <laughs> it's not the moon. <laughs> yeah. No, that, that, that's... Uh, that sounds very. It's, it, it sounds very. Um, it sounds uh, very French. Anyway. Forget yeah. it. It's no, not. it's great. Well, but well, I'm thank you. Saying, I'm saying I'm glad that you're. Among the people who, who read my films, the way I, I love to understand it, and and I'm glad to talk to you. Thank you. And there's yeah. there's so much to read, and I just want to say one last time for everyone listening: uh, Epicentro is available now on kinolorber.com. It uh, it's a great film. I I'm a huge fan of your work, and I think there's a lot to to gather and look at, not just the finger, but but the moon itself. Quite literally, in this film, uh, is worth watching. <laughs> And um, thank you so much for your time, Hubert. Merci. Merci. Thank you. All right. I'm gonna, should I cut off or do you cut off? I'll cut it off. Uh,